For a long time, I have dreamed about my own flight controller. Yes, I made my own flight controller including best of all features I have upgraded till now. So let's break those limitations. A flight controller mainly contains four segments. Input segments take the instruction from the user where to move the drone. And the output segments sends the PWM signal to the ESCs and control the motor speed in order to fly according to the instructions. The IMU simply measures the tilt angle in three axes. The processing unit collects all data and corrects the tilt angle using the PID controller. We can also include peripheral devices like GPS, compass, but that would be for another video. For the processing unit, a node MCU had laid around since long. So I'm gonna use that. Since the node MCU has a lower processing power, actually this little device is way more powerful than I thought. It has Wi-Fi, it runs on 80 MHz, it has inbuilt floating point processor. So that's quite awesome. For the IMU, I'm gonna use MPU6050. It comes with a gyroscope and an accelerometer sensor. Here I'm not using any transmitter and receiver. I'll use Wi-Fi for communication. And the reason? Wait a bit. For the rest of the drone, I'm gonna use my drone which I've made 2 years back. So I gathered all the things and started with the coding. The sensor uses I2C to communicate. So I connected serial data and serial clock to the D1 and D2 of the node MCU. As described in the datasheet, it has 3 modes for each sensor. I'm gonna use 500 degree scale range of the gyroscope and 8G scale range for the accelerometer. To get the angles from it, I have to configure these registers. The Y library of the Arduino ID will easily do this job. Then I request 14 bytes from the sensor and read the angles in series. Make sure that you have defined the integers as 16 bit as the data is a 2 complement value. The accelerometer provides real time angle, but the gyroscope provides angular velocity. If I want to get angles from the gyroscope, then I have to integrate the angular velocity in each loop. So I got angles from two different sensors. Well, the motors generate a lots of vibrations, which will significantly affect the accelerometer. So I have used a complementary filter to overcome this problem, which uses both sensor data to generate a stable angle, but the gyro sensors have little errors. To get it solved, I have placed the drone level and read the data for 4000 rams. Then took the average and I got the gyro errors. In this way, I can calibrate once and use every time. Then I subtracted it in each loop. So now I get the perfect real time angles. Before getting into the ESCs, we need to know about the PWM. PWM is a method of producing pulse of high and low state of a pin. The data transferred through it is the time between the rising edge and the falling edge of the pulse and it is refreshed periodically, which is the frequency of the PWM signal. If you pull the signal pin of the ESC to high and pull it down after 1000 microseconds, then the throttle input to the ESC is 0%. If you increase that time up to 2000 microseconds, then the speed of the motor will increase accordingly. So here after defining the pin as output, in the loop section I set the pin to high and after 1000 microseconds I pulled it down. If I increase the high state time, then the motor speed increases. Normally this range is 1000 to 2000 microseconds. I used direct register control to minimize the delay of setting the pin high and low. Then I used micros timer instead of the delay function. Now whatever the value is, it will be always in range of 1000 to 2000 microseconds. So after setting the pin high, I have to wait at least 1000 microseconds. And it's a waste of time. So I put the MPU6050 code in that waiting portion. So at first I set the pin high then read the MPU6050 angles as it roughly takes 400 microseconds. Then it wait until the 1000 microseconds is over. Then pull down each of the 4 pin connected to the ESCs according to the throttle to be sent to the ESCs. In this portion we got 600 microseconds so I can put other codes here. And still the refresh rate will be 2000 microseconds giving us a PWM frequency of 500 Hz. So now we can control the speed of individual motors. But to sync it with the angles in order to correct the tilt angles, I'm gonna use PID controller. It uses three types of controller. 
The peak controller changes its values proportional to the angle using this formula. The more you tilt the drone, the more it will increase and will reduce if the tilt angle decreases. But only with it the drone will be wobbly, something like this. So we need some braking system. And here the D controller comes into place. It only reacts to changes in the angle. But when the angle is close to 0 degree, the P controller will not work for the D controller as the P controller value will be very low compared to the D controller value at that angle. So we need another controller, I controller, which will integrate the values until the tilt angle is perfectly 0 degree. And the PID is the sum of those three controllers. I created PID controller for each of the three axes of the drone, roll, pitch and yaw. The calculation takes very short time so I put the codes in 600 microsecond waiting state while generating the PWM signal for the ESCs. Now the drone is stable but I need something to communicate with it and control. I could use commercial transmitter receiver but they use a speed of PWM but I don't wanna mess up with it again. Since the node MSU has inbuilt Wi-Fi, I can use it for communication. I used UTP communication to communicate with the Python script running on my laptop. That script is very simple, just some keys to increase and decrease the throttle, control direction and changing the PID constant values. And the whole data is 28 byte long, causing a significant amount of delay in the loop for reading the characters from the buffer array. So I have to compress the data. Then I got something crazy, ASCII keys. Since the data only contains integer, so they can be presented with some specific characters. The Wi-Fi UDP library uses 7-bit character array as buffer, so we can use 0 to 127 as key values. But what will happen to those numbers which are greater than 127? Well, for that, I divided the integer in two parts, then presented it with two ASCII keys, and decoded it again in the Arduino loop section. But still, I can't send all data at once, so I used another character to define the data type. The type one contents roll, pitch, throttle and yaw values and type 2 contents the PID constants. So it will check the first byte and then read the data accordingly. Also I want to stream angles and drone data to the python script. So I used one loop for receiving the data and next one is for transmission and so on. And as you can see it seriously reduces the loop time, about 2200 microseconds maximum. Then I started the drone and configured the PID tuning, increase the decontroller until it becomes wild. Then same to the P constant. And set the I controller to minimum values and that gives me a very good result. Well, this is a very simple PID controller, I'll make an advanced version of the PID controller later in another video. So let's see how it flies. This is a very simple flight controller. I'll upgrade it in upcoming videos like adding GPS, compass, autopilot, altitude, and a lot more things. And talking about this, I have used Wi Fi instead of the transmitter. So, yes, it can provide unlimited range. Don't worry, I'll make a dedicated video on transmitter communication. I'll upload the codes and make it open source for all of you if this video cross 1000 likes. So, like and share the video, subscribe for upcoming projects, and thanks for your support. See you soon in the next video. Till then, bye bye.